Good afternoon, everybody. Let me just adjust my camera one second. There we go. That should do it. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm assuming there's people there. I haven't said anyone mention anything in chat. If not, I will just persevere. Um, hey, Darkstar. How's it going? Oh, Shamoni's here as well. Um, hey, guys. Hope everyone's well. Welcome to today's stream. You know the drill by now. I I whiffle waffle for a minute, uh, and then we get into some uh, some terror tech shenanigans. Um, how are you both? I know Darkstar and Charmoni are in. I can't see who anyone else is. It's in the chat. Uh, if you're in chat, just give yourself a big up. Uh, Darwin's here as well. Oh, hey Darwin, I miss you out there. Sorry, mate. Um, news, big news. Yeah, big news today. Let's get that out the way first. You can now buy TerraTech on the Switch in Japan or on a Japanese Nintendo eShop. That's the biggest news of today. Um, yeah. So go get it if you're in Japan. Uh, that's literally it. That's all That's all the news I have. Um, what else? The next Unstable should be out relatively soon. Um, so there's all you can go check out all the new quality of life stuff that we talked about last week. Um... As well as the lovely new block magnet controller. Magnet block. Block magnet controller. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, so that's all there. That should be ready to go tomorrow, I believe. Or maybe even today. I can't quite remember. Um, but that's... Excuse me. Sorry, I got the hiccups. That's what an inconvenient time to get the hiccups. <clears throat> so yeah. So that's that that's, should be ready to go. So get ready for that. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um... Uh, news about development. So, console updates. Um, so, I'll give you a bit of insight as to what um, what our development cycle is like. Um, so, anyone that may have, may have worked in software development or games development or any kind of development cycle. Um, the way it goes, usually, well, with us anyway, we have what are called milestones. So, milestones are broken down into uh, two-week or three two-week sprints. So a milestone effectively takes up six weeks, and these comprises of two uh, of three two-week sprints. So each sprint um, dictates. You know, we then th those sprints dictate kind of what work goes, you know, what goes, what work goes into each sprint. And it's, it's an easy way for us to, um, yeah, produce stuff. It's it's a way that produces or method that producers use to pro to, to make games, and it's it allows it's cyclical. So it means you can you know. During one milestone, these these are the goals. These are things that you want to accomplish in this milestone, um, and then the sprints are just a way of you to achieve those 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 things. So you'll notice each milestone um, starts um, as soon as the last update has gone out. <clears throat> so that's the goal of obviously every for us every milestone, every update we put out on Steam. That is the end goal. That is the sort of what we want to achieve in that milestone. This milestone is going to be like I said last week, the quality of life updates. Um, so we're going to get those into the game. That's the the aim of that game, um, and yeah. So that's 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 how that works. The the the, the, the effort for next milestone. Um, so sort of for the next sort of eight to ten weeks um, is going to be working on console updates. Um, so there's going to be a concerted effort from the team to basically pull in. Um, yeah, basically to bring up the, all the console versions to the same version as Steam. That is the end goal of, of this update. It's, it's. Um, I think we're all very aware that there's been some lag at the minute between um, what console where consoles are and where um, the, the sort of the Steam version is. So this this next milestone is to bring that all up to speed. So everything will be on the same page. So PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. They will all have the same version uh, as the one that's currently on Steam. Now, just by the way things work, that's kind of, that's just how, there will always be a slight lag um, between PC, between the Steam version and the consoles. That's just because the certification process is a lot easier on Steam. We can literally just publish it. We don't need to get anything certified, whereas I'm sure you're bored, but I'm sure you're bored of me talking about how the certification process is on console. Um, but no mods on console, no, not yet, not yet. So um, if you were in our, I can't remember if uh, 
You were in. All right, Darwin. Yawning away there. Um, no mods on console yet. Um, but basically, that's that's what I'm trying to say. Is I'm a about long-winded way of saying that the next milestone um, will be working on um, console updates. Uh, Mirud King says I have problems with the Bursian TT unstable. They did not solve it for me, but I wait here. I'm not sure what your problem is. If you want to try and explain that in a bit more detail, that would be really helpful. Um, so that moves us on nicely. Those are the sort of the main things that, that I want to sort of talk about today, or we'll kind of announce. Um, Switch is now, you can now buy Terratech on the Switch in Japan. That's big. Um, hey, Zogbug, welcome to the stream. Um, and yeah, the next sort of update, you know, the next sort of eight to ten weeks I'll be working on uh, console updates. That's what you missed, Zogbug. We're talking about console updates. Um, I was basically saying that the Switch and um, Xbox and PlayStation 4 versions, um, we're gonna, they're all going to get a, a lovely big, um, a lovely big update soon. So basically, the idea is that the console versions come up to date with the current Steam version, which is a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. So that's exciting. Cool. Right. That's the news bits out of the way. Let's talk about what we're doing on today's stream. Um, now. Full disclosure, I was expecting to have more to do on today's stream. Um, let me just refresh the uh, the threads. Okay, so we've not actually had any more submissions. So what I was going to do <coughs> was go through... Excuse me. What I was going to go do was um, go through the submissions for the latest Terratech challenge, which is the Duathlon challenge, as you can see here. Um, we've already seen Darwin's. I had to, Charmoni, I had to remove yours, um, because, uh, because reasons. Um, because it was, it used replays rather than the actual runs that you did. Um, but we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's five runs that we can go through. That should be enough. Um, so there's five runs. Um, we're going to start with Patches, uh, and then we'll move on to the others that have been submitted. So that's a sec a effectively um, what we're going to... Oh, you did repost, didn't you? Yeah, of course you did. Yeah, so here you are. Um, so there should be enough for us to get through. Um, and that's literally all I've got planned for today's stream, is to go through these submissions. Uh, all the ones that we have submitted so far. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see where that game brings us. Um, if there's anything that we can do after that, then we'll have a look. But um, let's take a look. So let's just take a look. I'm going to put it on pause. So this is Parchus. Um, you can see the times here. Um, they've added no editing to show legitimacy. Good. Thanks, Parchu. Um, okay, so let's take a look. I mean, what would be good, actually, is if we had snapshots of um, each tech. I mean, that's that's an afterthought more than anything. So don't worry about it if you haven't done that yet. Um, so then we can look at them in a bit more detail. But this is Parchus. So this is an interesting look. What have we got here? We've got... Uh, adjustment thrusters, and you've got some fins at the back. I can't see the okay. So some boosters here, which is what the fuel tanks will be for. Adjustment thruster here. Are these are the pitch trim dry rows. They look like pitch trim dry rows. Excuse me, got the hiccup still. And uh, I guess we'll just have a look. So this is a sparrow they've called it. Okay, yeah. So there's plenty of boosters at the back there. Let's go to full screen too. Okay, and they're off. So this is their first. Ground run, it looks like. This is incredibly fast. Oh, got a bit stuck on the on the ramp there. This is very fast. I was a bit worried that it looked like it was floating around a lot, but actually, I mean, that was that was that was very fast, chat. Twenty-two seconds, twenty-three seconds for argument's sake. Um, there's another run should be on here as well. So that was their ground run. This is the uh, the air run. So we're gonna have another run at it. 22 seconds, 23 seconds. That is blisteringly fast. This bend coming up. This is I found this the hardest because oh yeah, because it's quite tight and you should be built up so much momentum by that point. I find it really hard. Uh, the rest is relatively straightforward if you're in the air. Oh okay, all right. They've done a restart. Should that be added to their time? Hmm. 
They're just restarting. They're just going in and restarting. Technically, this isn't legal. Darwin, you're right. It needs to be back-to-back -back consecutive runs. Successful runs as well. Okay, so 22, 23 was their ground time, and 21-ish, 22 was the air time. However, yeah, there was some restarts in the middle there, so I don't know if we can accept that, Pachu, um, if you're watching. Still an interesting run, though. Interesting run. Um, interesting tech that you've gone for. Um, Charm only says that's pretty much impossible for me. That is the aim of the game. That's the point of, of duathlon though, right? So the, the idea is, duathlon, you just, or triathlon anyway, you you go from the water onto your bike onto the run. Um, so they're kind of back to back. Otherwise, it's not a duathlon. Anyway, um, Sono, you're up next. Let's take a look at Sono's. So let's just take a look at what they've said. Uh, the tech name is Ray Tracing Unknown. Interesting. Uh, version 2, the home run duathlon. Probably the only player in the world who cleared Rolling Thunder within 30 seconds. Well, that sounds fun. Darwin says they've got another idea for a, um, another challenge after this one. Charmini says that they're not sure that anyone did that. Okay. Well, let's just see. Edit and connect. What is this? I didn't capture that. Whoa, okay, we're off. Goodness me, this is fast. I was kind of hoping we could get take a look at the tech. Whoa, okay, this looks so hard to control as well. 13 seconds. 14 seconds. Um, up next is the air version. Here we go, nice. Oh, this is so fast. Thirteen seconds. That is crazy fast. I think that looked like it was. Let me just see. What did we say at the start? Edit and connect successful cuts and entire screen captures to make the rec record easier to read. Okay. Right. So I've, I'm gonna have to pick the fastest run out of that because um, that's that was the aim of the game. Um. So basically, there's three minutes of video here. Should we go through all of them? I kind of feel like we should go through all of them. So this is the same ground one again. Well, let's skip over this. Bit. This is, the, <coughs> excuse me. This is the air run again. I mean, even that's still insanely fast. Thirteen three. That's crazy. Question is though, chat, and I'll let you judge on this one. How much of the ground are they actually covering? I suppose most of it. They are gliding over. I mean, that's a huge skip there as well. Yeah, a lot of air time on that. When they plan to fix the auto cracking problem of the TT unstable version. Auto cracking? What, what's the auto cracking? Oh! So we're gonna go again. So again, this wouldn't be a valid run because they've uh, they've restarted. It's gotta be back to back. So these are examples of what not to do. Um, yeah, they're incredibly fast, like bug. It's tough, though. It's really tough trying to kind of get that balance between what is easy to control on the ground and easy to control in the air, but is also fast. I mean, this is a great example, also a good tech, because it does both of those things very well. Or at least, it's, well, it's very, very fast, anyway. 
Oh, missed it. Okay, so right, so these all just look like duff runs, really. Um, Sharmoni, you're up next. So let's take a look. Actually, you know, I'm going to skip this back. What have we said about your submission? Okay, so it's just the times. Here we go. Right, let's take a look at Sharmoni's. See, this is a good ground run. Good ground run, Sharmoni. You are sticking well and, fir well and truly firmly on the ground. You're going to take the jump on. Nice. Kind of hovered over it a little bit, but that's fine. And over the last jump, she's going to glide through. Beautiful. I think that's all fine. Boom. 26. Good time. Good time, Shamoni. So let's see how we get on on the air run. And they're off. Nice. Down a bit, down a bit. Beautiful. Well done. Up a bit. Good stuff. Going to get over this crest. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. So what you'd do there then, just going to pause it, Charmoni. You'd just let it respawn and then you'd go again. You wouldn't restart the race. Just FYI. Yeah, it's a good little tech, this. Good use of, uh, of Hoverbug, which is in the rules. I didn't explicitly say you couldn't use Hoverbug. Good, okay, you've done better there, Shimoni. You've, you've not knocked yourself off. And down. Hey, nice. Good stuff. Right. 23. So that makes your overall time 50, 30, well, 50, yeah, 50 that. Um, respawn's fine. Re restart and sort of defeats the object because the clock will still run. When you respawn, the clock will still run, right? Um, no restart, but respawn is fine. Um... Yeah, so Shaman, if you want to have another go, by all means. There's no limit as to how many times you can have a go. Um, I will... Once the entries are closed is when I will lock it in, and that will be your final entry. But yeah, if you want to um, change your submission, just edit your edit your run, edit your um, your post on the forums, um, and just update, upload it to a different version. Um, that would be really helpful. Lovely jubbly. Um... Marood King, I can't understand what you're saying, my guy. Um, you said, because I can't literally play the game with slower version, Yevo 17 days, and they did not solve it. I have not been able to contact you because he refers me to Terror Tech Services and not to his company. I'm quite angry with the service, not to say that there is no means of contact one of you. Okay, right, so you can send an email oh, hang on, to this. Pay... Uh, Marood King, send an email to help at payloadstudios.com, um, the email address that I've just shared, and we will uh, we'll take a look into it in more detail. If you provide as much detail as you can in your email, that'd be really helpful. Uh, hey Nightfall, welcome to the stream. I hope you're well. Um, right, so we've done Shamonis, let's move on to Aardvark. So it says, uh, Aardvark says... Here, after many failed attempts, is my entry, getting two successful runs in a row with a tech that has its own ideas about what handling means. It was a real trial, but they managed. Good stuff. Right, so let's take a look. So this is Aardvark's entry. Um, let's take a look. Good look at their tech, actually. So we've got some hovers on here, got some nice big old wheels, got some spoilers at the front. That could be interesting. Okay, so if we're going for ground first, hang on, let me pause this. I just need to put the music on pause. There we go. Quite loud. So pretty solid run so far. Oh, taken up by a tree. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is this is the problems that I had a lot of. Um, was just general obstacles getting in the way on the ground. 
But it's a good, it's a good, it's true to the the, 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 the challenge, which is good, Aardvark. I, I'm, I'm enjoying this. And we're going to go up, and we're going to hover down a bit. Beautiful. And we're going to land. Good stuff. Right. So that's their ground run. I'm hoping the air run is... Uh... Marood King, I'll dig out your email. If you've emailed, I'm sure it may have got stuck in one of our spam folders or something. I'll, I'll dig it out and see if I can I can find it, and I'll, I'll drop you a reply, okay? So up next is Aardvark's Air Run. So this is this is this is good. This is this is excellent. So we've, what they've done is they've added obviously the um, no not hoppers, they're propellers, aren't they? Um, which has given you some uh, vectored thrust, no throttled thrust. In an upwards direction, um, which is giving you that uh, the air capabilities, which is good, and you've, those boosts are giving you your forward momentum. So all in all, a pretty good all around of their Aardvark. That was really good. Let's get rid of that Aardvark. That is the prima. That is exactly what we wanted. Rotors. Thank you, Darwin. Rotors, propellers. You know what I mean. Um, Aardvark, good stuff, my guy. Well done. Right, next up is Darkstar. You're up next. So let's take a look. Let's just pop that on pause. Um, so they said, after several prototypes, countless attempts, and a lot of luck, I managed to get a couple of back-to-back -back runs. Good stuff. And they said they still needed more speed, so they changed up their tech. Still the same problem as the last one. Uh, you hit a tree and it's gone, and it just explodes faster. Um, so this is their fastest run. So let's take a look. Let's take a look. Okay, so they're just they're off. They're off straight off the bat. Oh, hang on. Right, sorry. Uh, let me just pause. Um, play some of that. Cool. All right. Speedy, speedy. Twelve seconds. Twelve and a half seconds. That took on the ground. That's insanely fast, Dark Star. Good stuff. Uh, next up is the air run. Is this normal speed? My video seems kind of fast. No, this is normal speed, nightfall. They are just very, very fast techs. Check it, Check the clock at the top. Just very, very fast techs. Darkstar, this is crazy. Boom. 11 seconds. Just under 12 seconds. That's very fast. Very, very fast. So I think Darkstar has the lead at the minute. I need to sort my times out. But in total, 24 seconds. Um, I mean, yeah, no offence, I'd like, but it's going to smash that time. Charmoni, it beats your time as well. So, no, I need to check if... Um, if this is fine. But 27 versus... What do we say? 24. So Darkstar is kind of in the lead at the minute. Um, Darkstar is is very very much in uh, the leading position. Um, and next up is Yuk or Yuck with a time of 103 seconds in total. Um, what did they say? Okay. Oh, this looks cool. This looks really funky. Let's have a look. So it's just a pretty basic, almost like a Fatui, almost like the the, the first tech that you get in the game. Just with some rotors and some adjustment thrusters and some boosters. Oh, and a fuel tank. Let's see how they get on. Right, so they're off. Okay, lovely bit of boosting. Good stuff. Yeah, there we go. Oh, line up for that resources. There we go. Good stuff so far. This is excellent stuff. So there's a little bit of... Oh, it's downward thrust. Good idea. So it's pushing down. It's giving you a bit more... A bit more drag. A bit more traction over those, over those hills. That's... That's really good. Still need to set that. That's really, why is that so loud? Well done, yuck. 
And next up is your air, air round, air run. Really cute tech, Shimony. I'm enjoying this a lot. So let's get those. Okay, so we're at 22. Nice. Okay, it's 27. That seems to be the sweet spot for Yuck's, uh, Yuck's helicopter. Those adjustment touches. Those adjustment touches are really such a good idea. Oh, okay. Get a bit more. There we go. <laughs> so well done. By design, this is probably one of my favourites. It's so simple. Ardvark, I realise this is very similar to your design as well, using using the propellers. Or or the uh, the rotors, even. Um, using your rotors to give you some thrust, get, keep you airborne. And then some adjustment thrusters and some boosters just to keep you going in the right direction. Yeah, it's actually really stable as well. Has it got a gyroscope? I thought there's a gyroscope there somewhere. Yeah, I can see a uh, passive gyro there as well. So that'll be keeping it nice and stable. Re really nice, all little, all round tech, Zugbug. You're absolutely spot on. There we go, 56 for that air run as well. So that brings Yuck's total time to, what did we say? 103. Lovely stuff. Right, so of these, obviously Darkstar way out in the lead. Um, and actually, I mean, I was going to try and find a UK. Is that how you say it? UK. UK. Yuck. UK. Um I was Dark Star, I was I was trying to find I was trying to find reasons to try and eliminate you because you're just too good. I mean look, you're not the the naval warfare winner for nothing, right? Um but actually that's that's a really good tech. And I think I was let's look at your ground run one more time. Let's take a look at your ground run because uh you actually stick to the ground really well. I mean, you're right. You're bouncing a lot over a lot. You're bouncing all over the place. But actually, there's not much. If you're going that when you're going that fast, there's not much you can really do about that. I mean, this bit's a yeah. That seems. I mean, yeah. I literally can't argue with that. So Dark Star well out in front on 24 seconds. That's crazy. Um, that is definitely the the standard to beat. Um. Good. Well, all right. I mean, we're halfway through the stream. We've got half an hour left. I will need to sort of end it. It is a perfect run. Charmony is right. It is a perfect run. Um, obviously, not, not only having a good... So this is what I like. This challenge is, is challenging because you have to figure out a way to build a tech that is... Darks are a lot of luck. Yeah, it's also true. You've got to build a tech that can both fly and go on the ground. That in itself is a very hard thing to do. I mean, not hard, but like to make it go fast is another thing. Um, to make it go uh, fast and controllable is another thing and then to do it all um, back to back is, is another challenge so um, yeah thumbs up to Zark well thumbs up to everyone you'll get double thumbs up today that's that's some good stuff because um, this wasn't as an easy, an easy channel I feel like Darwin knew what he was doing when he suggested this this challenge thank you very much for that Darwin um yeah that's it so those, those are all the submissions that we have so far um as it <laughs> you bet good stuff well yeah darvin you are absolutely spot on as it stands dark star will be the uh the winner so uh we need to get some more um entries and more submissions in in, in the thread um, if you already have submitted, feel free to change it. If you feel like you can do a quicker run, by all means, go ahead and give that a go. Um, lovely. Chat time. Yeah, what should we chat about? Does anyone have anything you want to talk about? Yeah, let's dethrone the champ. Get after him, Dark Dark Star. I mean, obviously, Dark Star. By all means, you can also up your game if you have a, an even quicker run. Um, the futures of this game. What's your goal? Oh, Nightfall. That is a very good question. I love that question because I can I can answer it. A lot of the time, I'm waffling, but actually, the futures of the game. Well, the long term goal is to allow players to do pretty much what they like in Terratech. Um, short term, we are going to look at 
Uh, obviously, we're going to continue to add content. So we're going to add updates. That's going to be new missions. That's going to be new blocks. That's going to be new, um, you know, new, new new stuff to do. That's not going to change. We're going to continue that for forever or for as long as we can because um, it seems to be working. I mean, you guys still play it. People still buy it. That's that's the winning combination, right? Um, so yeah, we'll continue to do that. Um, and yeah, we'll see, you know, just adding, adding more and more cool stuff to the game. Um, then the sort of longer term, but also still also the immediate thing is mod support. So mod support we've been working on for about over 12 months now. Um, regular viewers will be bored of me saying this by this point, but um, we've been working on mod support now for about 12 months. And it's at a point where we can... Just that will drip feed. We continue to drip feed new stuff into the into the official mod support tools. Um, so the next iteration, the next sort of version of the mod support, you'll be able to support wings and anchors. So those are the two next things that go into that. The longer term goals for mod support, though, is to allow unofficial mods, which obviously has been a thing for since Terratech was a thing. Um, we will officially support unofficial mods, and that's really exciting because. At the minute, official mod support is actually still quite limited in what it can do. Um, you know, we, all, all you're really able to do is create skins, corporations, and blocks. And then even with blocks, you can't create all of the blocks. You can only create, like I said, um, gun or weapon guns, cabs, and wheels. And then we're going to add wings and, and anchors to that. So really what you can create in, in, in using official mod support is... Um, is quite limited, but that's fine because ultimately, with the addition of support for um, unofficial mods, or the actual term that we're using is Nutera or Nutera. Um, that's the, the tool. The name of the unofficial mod support tool is Nutera. Um, you know, we can we can. The beauty of that is there are mods that exist in that that we can't even dream of. So, for example, there's a water mod. Um, I mean, it's a very you know, it's 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 very much a mod. Um, I'm you know, so that. Um, but it's a water mod. You know, it adds a water um, plane, a plane of water to Terratech, and you can control that using the mod. It's all very clever. And and, and the shout out to Aesper, um for for doing that because man, it's um it's some work. Um, also, I'm I'm sure I'm missing out a load of other people when I mention Ace Bar, but um, I'm sure Exxon had stuff to do as well. But basically, what unofficial mods allow us to do is do the crazy stuff. That allows us to do stuff that we can't physically, not physically, but we, you know, we're we're slightly restricted in um, in what we can and can't do with Terratech. Um, Zugbug said he said the thing you guys said. Uh, what he said the thing. Oh, he said okay. He said water. Sorry, I got confused. Yeah, so it basically means that things like water can be added. And also it means that um, co-op crafting, there will be a mod that you can unlock co-op crafting. Um, you know, that that then frees up, well, it will cause issues. I'm, I'm just going to say that now. Um, but, you know, it, it, free, and, and it basically gives the game, it puts the game in the player's hands. It, you know, when... You know, long, long down the road. This is a long, long, long way away. But when eventually we stop supporting Terratech, because that's going to happen. As much as we would like to say, Terratech won't. We can't support Terratech forever. Um, when that day happens, we can just pass, literally pass the, not literally, but you know what I mean. Like we can figuratively pass the reins to the players and say, if you're, you know, if you want to, you know, to the modding community, to players that you know, and then they could, the, the modding community will then be the developers of Terratech because they can add stuff and we will support it. It'll be supported by the Steam Workshop, by the by the community, by the forums. That's not going anywhere. Like, the Terratech community is not going anywhere. Um, so yeah, that's that's the long term, long, 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 long term um, goals for Terratech. Um, so yeah, so that sort of wraps that up, I suppose. Um, you not afford to ask boats, uh, water vehicles could be a thing, sub submarines. Absolutely. These are all things that, with mods particularly, they are already a thing. I'm sure boats are already, um, and buoyancy blocks are already a thing with mods. So um, yeah, go go if you're into modding or unofficial mods or anything like that, go check them out. Go over, head over to our Discord. Um, I'm hoping that Moobot's going to big me up and point to Discord in a second. 
Um, join our unofficial modding support, uh, unofficial mod, excuse me, our unofficial modding community, and they will be able to sort of put in the right directions to how you can get mods, uh, mods installed. Um, but yeah, ultimately, Nightfall. That's 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 it, really. Boats and, and that sort of stuff. Um, Crossplay between PC and consoles. Charmoni is asking. Um, oh, that is a that is a sticky one. Ooh, I've not put the music on in the background either. Um, I can't see that happening anytime soon, Charmoni. Um, it's just not built for it. Um, I mean, I I think I I've asked the question. Um, and I've been told that the demand is quite low, so it's quite low on our list of priorities. I'm afraid. Um, I would agree, crossplay would be amazing, um, but because there's such a disparity in what consoles could do versus what PCs can do, and even the disparity in what each console can do, um, it's just such a big thing. Um, so I can't see it happening. If I'm if I'm being honest, I could be wrong. I mean, I, I this has happened a lot. I've said I can't see it happening, and then a week later we announce something. Um, but yeah, no, I agree. Cross uh, crossplay would be would be amazing. Um, just just the disparity in the versions would be such a a, a, a monumental task. Uh, Zugbug, you did ask how has the release in Japan gone? I believe it's gone all right. I think it's there. Um, the, interestingly, with uh, particularly the, the the first party developers, so Switch, uh, so Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox. We don't really see sales data or any of that stuff uh, until uh, at least a week or two after release. Um, but we've not had any reports of it falling over or things breaking, which is always a good thing. So I think so far, so far, so far, so good. Um, Zugbug, Zugbug makes a good point. Um, even with consoles, even if you are up to date with the same versions, and um, the PC update, so the block the block limits and build limitations are still a thing. So example, yeah, so you're right. So on Switch, the biggest tech you can build is like 16 by 16. Um, on or maybe 12 by 12. On PC, the build limits like 125. It's it's massive, and the, the, you know those 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 are differences that you are basically you you'd be yeah, it would just get really messy um, doing crossplay. So yeah, I can't see it being a thing. Um, PS Five is more powerful. Unfortunately, Terratech isn't on the PS Five um, yet. I don't know. What's, I don't know what's happening with that. I, I put this to um, to Rob, who's our publishing director, and asked if it's possible. And in theory, it should be quite easy. So they've made it PlayStation, Xbox, PlayStation, and Xbox have made it quite easy or relatively easy to um, to port your game over to. Um, Zugbog just confirming that the Switch is 16 by 16 by 16 or 16 cubed. Um, but yes, yeah, Xbox and PlayStation have made it very easy to port your game over um, to next gen um, with little changes. And it means you can still change things like resolution quite quickly, quite easily. So you can go from on what would be a 1080 game, um, 1080p or HD version on uh, Xbox One and PlayStation 4, you should be able to upscale that quite quickly, quite easily to 4K, for example, on next gen. They've made that quite straightforward. What isn't straightforward is things like actually gain, altering the game itself. Um, so things like the block limit and things like that. Things that would benefit from being on next gen isn't as straightforward, unfortunately. Um, again, we, we've posed the question and we know it's, we know it's possible. Um, we just need to figure out how the, the best way to do it. Um... Slugbug says they don't want people making their switch explode with multi techs. Exactly. Multi techs and any of that good stuff. Right. Um, was there any more questions? I think that was it. Chat, I'm sure you're bored of me talking. My voice is actually starting to hurt. So I'm going to end the stream there. Um, oh, Darwin, what's up? There is a bug with official mod. Ooh, interesting. Um, GK brought it to my attention. Okay. Darwin, let me know. I'm going to answer Nightfall's question. Nightfall said, What's your thoughts on the popularity of the game? Did we hit peak with Sunday and Latlan, or any ideas on the content creators? Um, so, that is a, again, that is a great question, Nightfall. God, you're really good at these questions. So, 
Yes, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Um, that was the making of Terra Tech. I think it's safe to say um, the second Sunday, Sunday did their um, their their series on Terra Tech. We just saw our sales just skyrocket. Uh, our popularity went went huge because that's some level. That's that's some monumental level level of exposure. Uh, what was interesting about that um, was. Sunday obviously he's a big Minecraft player and Terratech is very similar to Minecraft. Um so it was just it just felt right. It was a it was a um I like to call this phrase it's it's a, this is a really like marketing phrase, but it's cross pollination. So it just worked well. It meant that Sunday was getting new content, he was getting this really cool, new, exciting game, and it worked so it worked well for his audience, but also it worked well for us because, you know, it was getting exposure on a level that, that you just can't buy. You literally can't buy that level of exposure. Well, I mean, you can. You can now pay YouTubers or influencers to do that for you. But um, yeah, that was huge. So that was definitely the the the, the peak. Um, however, usually what you'll see with games, they will launch, and historically this has always been true. They'll hype, hype, hype. You'll see adverts. You'll see whatever. You'll you know you'll you'll be aware of a game. It'll launch. There'll be it'll go like this. The trajectory of, of sales will be like this. You'll see. Um, it'll be, and then you launch, and then your sales numbers will go up, and you'll come back down on the other side, and then they'll they'll sort of plateau out quite quickly. Really, weirdly, what we've seen is we've just seen bumps. We've seen bumps and bumps because, so yes, yeah, Sunday launched. Sunday sort of um, bigged us up, which was great. That then made us tick over for nicely for a while. Then we had like a we had a free weekend on Steam, and then we launched. So you, these are bumps that you see along the way. And then we've had console launches as well, which is sort of touched on. And then you have, we've had sales in between all that. So we look at it as a year thing now, whereas mostly you'd sort of look at it as a, a snapshot or launch and sort of what your launch figures are for the first 12 months. What we've been able to do, because Terrasec has continued to be successful and been continued to be popular, um, we've actually had some really good sales. Like, it's it's not, it's, they've, they've continually been very good. Like, last year... It was one of our best years for TerraTech, which never happens. What rarely ever happens for games. You usually see a huge spike at the start, and then it sort of slowly peters off. But for some reason, either we, you know, we maybe it's the streams. I'm gonna say it's the streams. It's the streams and the update videos that make things that make it really good. Um, no, I, I, I there's, there's a combination of a lot of factors, but obviously it's the fact that we continue to update the game. Um, it's the fact that. Um, you know, regularly updated as well. Um, it's the fact that we're continually engaging with our community, and, and you know, you become advocates for our game. You talk to your friends about our game. COVID is also a big thing. Charmoni, good shout. Literally, people weren't able to leave their house. So, what else are you going to do but buy that game that you've been that you've wish listed on on Steam? Um, yeah, there's all these factors that have sort of played into it, and it's been um, it's been pretty successful. It's been, you know, it's been a great, and you know, not just for me, but it's been a great game for, well, not just for the game, but for me, it's been a great game to work on. Um, I love, I love this game. It's brilliant. Um, literally, this is not to go on about it, but this is my job, guys. I'm literally someone's paying me money to just talk nonsense. It's amazing. Uh, taken, hey, taken one, two, one. Uh, Nightfall did say, oh yeah, are you guys ever going to pay content creators to play the game? A sponsored video or stream could be great for exposure, I would think, but I'm not sure. No, you're absolutely right, Nightfall. Um, <clears throat> it's something that we've we've toyed around with the idea. We've just never needed to. Um, usually you'd do that at the start of the game. You'd, you know, if you're hyping the game up, um, you would, you'd go to con content creators or influencers and you'd get them to... Um, you know, give you exposure that way, which 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 feeds well into the the release schedule, because um, it means that it's getting usually you'd get it in pre-alpha or, or alpha, and you get them to show it off, um, or definitely in beta, and then you'd give out beta access and that sort of thing. That that whole feed that that feeds into the whole hype um, of the game. Um, so yeah, it's, it's usually part of your marketing strategy for when you launch. When you're three or four years in. Um, Unless you want to revitalize it, it's just not worth it. Um, unless you're trying to breathe new life into it. Unless you have like a major update that's going to breathe new life into the game. Um, we wouldn't need to pay content creators to do that. Um, so yeah. 
Um, Darwin, let me read what you were saying about the bug. Um, uh, when you said so they were saying about a bug um, with the official mods, uh, when you apply a brush skin, sometimes the game crashes, sometimes it doesn't. I believe there is something wonky going on with this skin brush feature. Okay, cool. Darwin, can I get you to post that on our um, on our forums if you haven't already? Can you post that on the uh, official mod support forums? Um, we can take a look at that. Um, <laughs> Cree, welcome. Uh, all hail the Lemon Kingdom. All hail the Lemon Kingdom. Um, lovely stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, Zugbug says, have you guys ever considered making other games of similar calibre to Terra Tech? Yeah. Yeah, we've considered it. Um, obviously, you know, we'd, we want to continue to success. Um how far down the line that is, I don't know. I mean, we're very happy with how Teratech's going so far. So let's just carry on with that, you know? Um, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Um, I don't know. I mean, what kind of game would you like us to make? How about that, chat? If you answer that in chat now. What kind of game? Would you want more of a terror tech game? Or would you like... Uh, here's an idea. Oh, you want terror tech too? Right. That could be fun, I suppose. Online dating game. Nutley boy. Payload, in Payload Studios <laughs> introducing online dating sim. Um, good afternoon, Nutley Boy. Welcome to the stream. Um, here's an idea for a game that I'd love to make because it's the kind of game, the exact game I would play. Is a sports role-playing game. So you've got sports, you've got your Maddens and your Fifas and some of your baseball games and NHL games, and you've got RPGs, right? Why not bring them together? Why not have an RPG sports game where you literally you get better at certain things by training so like in soccer or football as I'm going to call it because I am English you um you know if you're a striker you pr you train on your striking on your striker and your shooting skills and you become a better striker and then you play in a team and then you you know you, you join different clubs and you play you play football for different teams based on on how much you know on your I mean you literally have in an in, like in an RPG you have XP and you have skill points and you assign skill points to certain things. I realise a lot of um, games have that, but like I want it to be focused purely on the art. Excuse me, on the role-playing element of being a sports person. <laughs> a sports person. If that makes sense. It does sound like yeah. It's kind of like like Tony Hawk's pro Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Yeah, it's very similar to that actually. Um, but I'm talking about like I'm a mean. I'm talking about football. I basically want to become. Um, Who's not a so not, not an obscure football player that I can reference here? Um, I want to become Zlatan Ibrahimovic. That's what I want to do. Uh, Zlogbox says adventure sports exactly. Anyway, uh, Zlogbox, you did say what if there was a game like Terra Tech, but you could actually get out of the vehicles and move around? A smaller perspective, maybe. Interesting. Yeah, that'd be fun. Cool. Right, chat. I'm going to have to leave it there because my voice is starting to hurt more and more. I'm going to be talking too much. Thanks so much for stopping by, chat. It's been a real pleasure. Um, I hope we can... Uh, we will see you soon. Um, <laughs> hey, there you go, Nightfall. Uh, we'd love to have watched the game, but it's a pretty big feat. And we're not quite ready yet. Yeah, that's still not changed. That's quite an old message from me, but that hasn't changed. Um, lovely stuff. Right, chat. Have a great week. Um, we will see you guys next time. Hopefully we'll do more um, duathlon submissions. L uh, look after yourselves. And we'll see you guys next time.